In this video, we'll be taking a look at a great vocal thickening trick in Cakewalk by BandLab using no plugins whatsoever. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now I'm sure many of you like me are big fans of Warren Hewitt from the Produce Like a Pro channel. And a few years ago, he brought out an excellent video about his vocal thickening trick, which he does in Pro Tools using the Waves Doubler plugin. Now since then, there's been another couple of videos have come out from Chris Salim and also from David Mood, showing you how to do it in Cubase and Studio One. Not to be outdone, I started to think about how can this be done in Cakewalk by BandLab, and that that's a solution which I have for you today, and we'll be using no plugins whatsoever. So please do stick around for that. Now, before we get started, if you like this kind of content, all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plugin reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you are notified about my future videos. Now, don't forget to check out the links in the description, which link to the original videos which inspired this one that you're going to see today. But first of all, let's see how it's done in Cakewalk by BandLab. So in order to demonstrate this technique, I've put together a very simple sample project. You can see it on the screen now. It's just made up of a backing track here. I condensed all of the instruments down to one stereo track. And then we have the vocal, which we're gonna be working with here in pink. It's labeled Susie because Susie sung it a couple of weeks ago for us. So let's just have a quick listen to see how it sounds at the moment. So that's the vocal that we're gonna be working with. We're gonna try and thicken that up. And we're gonna be using a four step process. So I've come up with an acronym for this, which is DPDP, standing for duplicate, pan, delay, and pitch. Now you could use this on vocals like this, high pitch vocals, or you could use it on low pitch vocals, deep vocals, in which case they would be DP, DP, deep vocals. Let's move on. So let's start off with the duplication and panning stages of this process. So I'm just gonna right click on this space here um, on the track which we're gonna duplicate. So I'll right click there and I'll select duplicate track. Now this brings up this dialog box and there's a couple of things that we have to set here. First of all, we wanna make sure that events is ticked so that it does actually copy the audio over. And then we need to set the number of repetitions. So we need eight repetitions all in all. So I'll just type eight in there. Now I just want you to note that I have effects and send selected here. And I'm gonna keep it like that for the moment. But when you begin trying this technique yourself, you may decide to make these duplicates without having these effects and sends applied. That will be up to you. Let's click on OK, and you can see that very, very quickly Cakewalk makes another eight copies of this particular vocal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the number three down there for that first copy, and then I'm gonna shift click uh, on the last of those tracks there. So I've got all of those selected because I wanna send them all through to one bus so that I can control uh, the, you know, the volume and pan with just one fader. So down um, on the first one at the bottom where I'm gonna select the output, I'll click on that. And then while I'm holding control on my keyboard, that's very important, I'm gonna select new stereo bus, okay? Now that creates a new bus over here at the end and it's routed all of those tracks through to that. So let's go ahead and rename uh, that bus to, we'll just call it dupe, okay, dup. Because I'm not very good at typing and typing duplicate is quite a thing for me. Anyway, um, the thing I like to do in Cakewalk once I've got all of those things routed through to a bus is change the color of that bus because it changes the color of all the tracks which are assigned to it. And I'm gonna choose green so that it really stands out here so that we can see what we're working with. So there are all of our duplicate tracks. I'm just gonna just push the volume with the fader down pretty low to begin with. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is set up the pan for each of these tracks. Now we're gonna alternate. So starting off on the first track, we are gonna pan it all, or it helps if I choose the pan control, all the way over to the left, the next one goes right, the next one goes left, the next one goes right, the next one goes left, right, left, right. So what we end up having so far is four stereo pairs, yeah, eight tracks all in all, alternated left and right. So that makes up four stereo pairs. That's a very, very important concept to have in your mind when you're working through this process. So let's move on to the delay part of this process. 
So in the next couple of sections, I'm going to be throwing some figures at you, which may be a little bit difficult to remember at first, but don't worry, I've created a cheat sheet and I'm going to put a link for that in the description down below so that you can refer to it when you're using this technique on your own projects. Now, the first thing that we're going to do to these duplicates we've created is add small amounts of delay to each of them so that they're not all happening at the same time as the main vocal. And in order to do that, we're going to use some shortcuts in Cakewalk. Now, if you start off by pressing P on your keyboard, that'll bring up your preferences menu. And what you want to do is go down to the customization section and choose nudge. Now, if you can't see that, it's probably because you're in basic mode for preferences. So it looks like this. So you'll need to click on the advanced button so that you can see all of your preferences. That's the way I normally like to keep it. Then go to nudge, as I say, under customization, and you can see some options over here. Now, these are kind of presets for some keys on your keyboard so that you can easily nudge things around. We're just going to be using the first two, which is nudge one and nudge two. Now for nudge one, I want you to set it up to an absolute time of 10 milliseconds. Okay, you can see that set there. And then for nudge two, we're going to set it to an absolute time of 24 milliseconds. Now you could adapt these later on if you like, if it doesn't sound quite right to you. Um, but, you know, start off with these settings so you see what sort of sound that you do get. Now once we've set this up, it means that we've got some shortcuts available Available to nudge things around on our keyboard and that's on our numpad so the way it works is um, if you press one on your numpad it reduces you know moves it forward in time by the number specified in nudge one and if you press three on your keypad it moves it further on in time the other way so one's a minus one is a plus okay now the only actual two that we're going to be using is we're going to be adding 10 uh, milliseconds of delay on some tracks and on others we're going to be adding 24 so we'll just be using uh, the keys three and six during this process so let's click on apply and then click on close to get rid of preferences there. And let's start that process. Now, remember I said that these um, eight tracks are actually four stereo pairs. So we're gonna alternate what we're doing. Let me explain. Let's just zoom in. Um, I'm using holding control on my key while using the arrow keys to zoom in. Otherwise, we won't actually see what we're doing because it's such small amounts. So I'm gonna select the first of my uh, duplicate pairs here. Remember, this is panned left. And I'm gonna press three on my keyboard so that it nudges it uh, 10 milliseconds off. Then with the second one in the pair, which is the right side, I'm going to press six on my keyboard so that it moves uh, 24 milliseconds. Now for the next pair, I'm going to do it the opposite way around. So I'm going to do it 24 milliseconds and then 10 milliseconds. For the next pair, I'll reverse it again, do it 10 milliseconds and then 24 milliseconds. And for the last pair, I reverse again and I do 24 milliseconds and 10 milliseconds. Remember the keyboard shortcuts for this is to press three on the numpad to add 10 seconds and six on the numpad to add 24 milliseconds. So what we have now are all of these duplicates panned and now we've got some slight delay and it's different on each side of the stereo pair. So let's have a quick listen just to see how that sounds by itself. So I'll just solo all of those tracks and it's gonna sound well like it's got small amounts of delay. Let's have a quick listen. Only yesterday, honey, I was there with you. So we're starting to get there. Sounds a bit odd at the moment. It sounds like a real effect at the moment. We're going to blend it in later and make it sound a lot more natural. But really, the first, the next thing we want to do is add some pitch variations to those stereo pairs as well. So the last thing that we're going to do in this setup stage is add some pitch variations to our duplicates. And we're going to do that by using the groove clip feature in Cakewalk. So if we look at our first clip, our first duplicate clip that is, which we had panned left, um, you should be able to see a properties panel on the left hand side. If you can't see that at the moment, just double click on that waveform and that'll open that one up. Now if you go down a little, you can see where it says groove clip there. So you just click on that and then you need to make sure you you check switch, uh, sorry, stretch to tempo. So we'll just click on that there. Now what we're gonna do is do a negative value for the pitch on this one to begin with. So this is the left channel. So it starts off with a negative three value. That's three cents. It's a very small amount of pitch variation. And then we're gonna to go to our next clip, 
Okay, that's the right side of this pair. And we'll make sure again that we have stretch to tempo selected, and then we'll uh, do a positive value of three cents there. So the first one was minus three, the second one was three. Okay, now we're gonna switch things around a bit. In the next pair, we're gonna start off with a positive value, okay? So I'll just click on the waveform, then I'll make sure uh, stretch to tempo is selected, and we're gonna do a positive value of six this time, okay? So we've added three. And then for the next clip down, again, we'll select it, uh, stretch to tempo, and do a value of minus six. Okay, hopefully you can see where this is going. So we did plus and minus on the last one. So now we're going to do minus plus. So we'll select uh, this, the next duplicate there, uh, click on stretch to tempo, and we will do, so we did minus, plus, plus, minus. So we're gonna do minus nine this time. The next one, we'll make it nine. Okay, and then we'll finish off by doing a positive value again. This time it's going to be 12. So we'll start off with 12, and then on the last one, we will finish off with negative 12. So what we've got there is, is some incrementing pitch variations, but we haven't got all the positive pitches all on the right channel and all the negative pitches all on the left channel or vice versa. It's all kind of mixed up a little bit to sort of start to mimic the variations that you would get on with various voices singing together. So finally, what we're gonna do is blend these DP, DP vocals in with our main vocal using that bus's fader. So if you remember, we had all of those duplicates routed through to this bus, which I called dupe. And I also have another bus next to that, which is where the main vocals go through. So I'll just solo both of those, and I'll just make sure that the fader is all the way down to the bottom at the moment for the duplicate vocals. Now, when I uh, play this and I'm listening to it, I'm listening for this sort of point where um, when it's too much, you can sort of really hear the effect. Now that may be what you want, um, but if you want it to sound natural, you don't want to be aware of the effect. But you just get it to the point where it's there, you're not really aware of it, but if you did suddenly mute it, you'd find like you'd feel like something just dropped out or something went missing. So let's have a go and see if we can find that point. Only yesterday, honey, I was there with you. Only yesterday, honey. You now that feels pretty obvious to me right there. You can see I haven't got up very far, so I'm just going to pull back a little bit from there. Only yesterday, honey. I was there. Now that may work, but we really want to hear it in the context of the track, actually. So let's have a listen to that. I'm pretty happy with it just there, but it's gonna to be to taste, of course, for the particular song that you're working on and your personal taste. Now, there are some variations that you can make on this. You can play with the delay times a little bit. Um, you don't wanna make them too long, as been mentioned in other videos. If it becomes very obvious that there's a delay there, that's not what you want. And if it's too short, you'll definitely get some strange effects there. Again, you could play around with the pitch variation a little bit as well. The important thing is to try and mix it up a little bit. Okay, so you haven't got all of one kind of thing coming from one channel and uh, vice versa. Okay, now there are some other things that I would definitely experiment with this. First of all, you could try using on other things other than vocals. It would be an interesting thing. Um, now you can try using the same sort of effects change that you're using on your main vocal. You might try you might try something different. Um, something I would be keen to do would be to make some variations in the EQ of the duplicates, either just on the bus itself or actually on individual tracks. If you want to try those things out, go ahead, let me know how you get along in the comments down below. So I do hope that you found this video useful. If you've got any questions whatsoever, please do ask in the comments down below and myself or somebody else from this wonderful community will do their very best to help you out. Now talking about wonderful communities, I want to do a big shout out and a thanks 
to the Cakewalk by Band Lab Facebook groups. I was missing a small piece of this jigsaw and thanks to you guys, I was able to find it and make this video today. I can't know the answer to everything, so it's always wonderful when you guys help me out. Now talking about helping me out, if you did like this video, make sure you hit the like button. That tells YouTube that it should show this video to other people. If you didn't like this video at all, please do hit the dislike button twice. And if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you are notified about my future videos. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.